Alright, here is a controversial one. Three rules that all players break and three things that all players do that you are not doing that gives them an unfair advantage over you in the sexual marketplace. Before we kick it off, I'm Dave and this channel is dedicated to giving you no BS novel dating advice for the modern man. Top link in the description, check out my website and uh, sign up to do some coaching with myself. Cold approach coaching and others as well. Now, we need to premise this controversial topic with the fact that this is in a first world Western society that these rules are being broken. And they're not real rules, they're more moral, cultural rules that have been set up to oppress men even though women on the other hand don't have to obey these rules and there's no pressure on them to obey these rules it's a double standard in the culture that is set up really to oppress men hold you back and give the advantage to the opposite sex and players that understand this they break these rules because they know in a first world country keep in mind this is the harbour bridge the opera house is over here this is a first world country this is a western society it's a feminized society where the political system is quite rigged so we need to premise that and understand that if you are one of those men that have been brainwashed you might get angry at this video you're still living under the the rigged system that is not really helping you at all I need to premise that. So one, <clears throat> one, one rule that a lot of those guys break and something that they do that you are not probably doing at the moment is that they have a constant flow of women coming into their lives. Now they have a constant flow of opportunities and uh, usually the players in Western society, they have generally one strategy. That's one simplistic strategy uh, you know, let's just say they go to nightclubs all the time and they've developed a skill around uh, meeting women in nightclubs and they have a constant flow, constant supply, constant amount of leads coming in that uh, they utilize. Now obviously hitting the nightclubs is one advantage, there's downsides, you could become an alcoholic and end up with brain damage, end up having alcohol addiction or drug addiction etc there's problems associated with that uh, there's also a lot of players and I spoke to one recently who's in his late 20s early early 30s like 30 years old uh, who works full-time he works in construction <clears throat> and uh, he's very successful online you know just has that look he gets a lot of matches all the time and he's doing quite well then of course there's uh, the guys that know how to approach during the daytime and have that skill as well. Generally, they have one skill. They don't have a multitude of all of them. Another aspect of it is that they don't take anything seriously. They don't get attached. There's some birds. Welcome to Sydney. The seagulls. They don't get attached early. They understand that just dating a girl or sleeping with a girl, it is not a monogamous relationship early on and that women have so much leverage and power in the system that if they get attached on the first date, second date, or even after sleeping with a girl for a month, that she can leave at any moment because this is how Western society is rigged in favor of women. They fully understand that and so therefore they never ever get attached early. They have other things going on in their lives. They, for an example, have a full-time job and often have this feeling that if they were to date a girl and take it seriously too early, 
uh, it would conflict with their career and their job. So that's also definitely a factor as well. <clears throat> the third aspect of it is, for instance, the online dating guy that I told you about. If you met him in real life, you would never suspect that he was a player. So the other aspect of one is that they're never who you expect. They're never really that guy that you, you think is tall, handsome, charismatic guy. Um, it's never really the guy that you expect. This is almost across the board. There are some guys that you would suspect, but this is why sometimes with high status guys, you will, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger as, as an example, when, when, it, when he was outed as a bit of a playboy and he had multiple children scattered all over the place, we just, people were a little bit shocked because he, he seemed like such a nice guy and he's not allowed to be a player. Um, uh, this is something that uh, is quite often the case. Two, they believe in equality. Okay, now equality is having the ability to think critically and understand that the game is now heavily rigged in favor of women, especially in Western society. So a player fully understands that the game is rigged and that he is at a massive disadvantage. So he will use all avenues, all ways to treat the system that women would themselves. Keep in mind the paternity fraud percentage in Western society is approximately 30%. Look it up. And that's not testing all of the children. Let's just say we went and tested every single child in, say, Australia to check if the father is really uh, the biological father of the kids that he's raising. Might even be 50%, who knows? But this is the hidden secret of the West is that paternity fraud is out of control. Players understand all of these stats. They understand that the system and the political system is rigged and that women lie. You know, the, the classic mystery, who lies more, men or women? <clears throat> women lie so much more they take advantage of all political aspects that they possibly can to rig it in their favour. And players know that they have to play it on a level playing field, which means that they need to use all of the same deceitful tactics that women do. I know it's controversial, I know you, a lot of you guys will be like, oh, paternity for, fraud is only one statistic of so many that I could bring up right now, but that, this isn't a statistics video, is it? This is a, what do players do that you are not currently doing yourself? The other aspect of that is that they know, let's just say an example, they, the equality bleeds over to how they date. So if they go out on a date with a girl, and she is spending the entire date, early in the date, looking at her phone, disrespecting him. She's kind of rude. She kind of seems like she's not really interesting. She's, who knows, she might be texting other guys while on the date. He doesn't feel obligated to be kind and nice to her and stick around and pay for the entire date and uh, pretend and... Uh, be super nice to her when she's not reciprocating the same respect. Let's just say he goes out on a date with a girl and she's spending all of the time looking at her phone. She's like giving one word answers. She's not even treating him like he exists. She's just treating him like uh, a credit card that's there to pay for the date and uh, pay for her because she's so entitled. He will leave on the date before paying the bill or before even ordering the food if she's rude. That is also connected to him having uh, a lot more options because you know, let's just say he goes to the nightclub all the time, he has other girls in his phone. His little black book is full of other girls. Uh, he has other options on his online dating profiles. He has that, you know, one reason he has a lot of options. And the second one, 
that bleeds over into it because when he goes out on dates, if girls don't seem like they're interested, uh, he's not going to uh, be super nice because a lot of women these days, they don't uh, live up to the standard of civil society. Not all, but a large percentage these days, and that percentage seems to be increasing every day. So let's just say he's talking to a girl and she's rude, he will be rude back. He won't uh, be disrespected and um, he will leave. He, he doesn't care. And uh, he's not going to be walked over. This is one thing the players do have, where guys that don't have a lot of options, um, and even guys that have a lot of options, they will allow women to walk all over them, which is also an aspect of why society is the way it is these days. It's because men are allowing that. <clears throat> That's a big one, I would say. Equality in all avenues. And now three. Three, which is the most controversial of all, okay? The most controversial one of all is that women lie to men all the time. All the time. Almost everything about them is a lie. And to understand how, let's just say, if a woman, she gets, she's earning $50,000 a year, she expects her man to be earning fifty-five, sixty, dollars $100,000 a year. It's rigged in her favor. She very rarely will date down, not only financially, but looks wise. Let's just say, how many women would prefer to date a shorter man? They prefer taller men that are earning more money than them, that are better looking and good, and have uh, a better career and everything, and a better social circle. Women don't go to men and go, hey, I've got all this money, I've got this nice apartment, I've got this career, I'm taller than you and better looking than you and a lot younger than you and uh, I've also got a group of friends that I'd like to introduce you and bring you into my life and the man just says yes or no answers, looks at his phone, doesn't have to bring any personality and joins her life and she supplies everything. It's the total opposite. Men have to come with the height, earning the the most amount of money they need to pursue the women which puts them at a disadvantage uh, and they uh, bring the woman most of the time into his group of friends his tribe and they join his tribe now premising it with that the end bit is players lie that's the controversial thing Players lie, and I know this is this is only this is only controversial for men that aren't up to date with what is happening today. Let's just say I was a multimillionaire living in South America or in Asia or Eastern Europe, and I had a lot of money, I had a lot of leverage, I had a lot more freedom than I do in the Western society. Then, whenever I'm dating a girl, I'm far more obligated to be truthful and not mess around with her and play up because I've got all of the leverage, you see? But in the West, you've got no leverage <laughs> and I do know some extremely wealthy, successful men that have got themselves trapped into a, a marriage where the woman is taking advantage of him He's got some kids and he's paying for everything and if he was to break free of that he would lose half of everything that he's got and his entire life would be ruined. Not to mention she could bring up some charges against him and she could ruin his life in other ways, maybe ruin his public persona, uh, it could leak out. So many things could go wrong to high value men in the West uh, and so he, trying to be the upstanding moral citizen that he is, never lies, never does anything wrong, does the right thing all the time, and he's getting taken advantage of. This is not the same case if he was living in Thailand or Brazil 
or Poland because he would have a lot more leverage there, he would have a lot more freedom over there, he wouldn't be uh, getting abused by the political system, it wouldn't be rigged against him, etc, etc, etc. So he would then have a lot more power in the relationship and therefore morally he would have uh, a lot more reason to be honest with his intentions and treat her with a, the utmost of respect. But in a place like Australia, <laughs> It's so rigged where lying, paternity fraud, uh, getting rorted while getting married. We've now got de facto rules and laws where they can take half your money just by dating you for two seconds. Uh, we've got all of these political things set up that uh, are massively uh, put the men at such a huge disadvantage that players understand that. They have the critical thinking, they're not brainwashed by society and they understand that the only way to get some sort of even playing field out of it is to lie. If you were in South America and you've got a lot of money and you're jacked, sure, you need to be honest because morally these girls are at such a disadvantage. But let's just say it's somewhere else like New York or LA or Sydney, Australia, or London, or Toronto, Canada, you're at a huge disadvantage. And so therefore you need to play the game with the rules that are set out in front of you. And when people try to morally uh, attack you, well, you're gonna have to play the game the way, it's, the way it's rigged. Fair, this is why men like sports. This is why men like having a referee. This is why men like playing sports where there's an audience, a referee, and if the audience and the referee get everything wrong, then they have the, the uh, video replay. <laughs> uh, because men want everything to be fair. But when it comes to dating, the system is rigged. It just is rigged. It's unfairly rigged in favor of women to the point where it is detrimental to the lives of the men. And players know this, and they try to even up the playing field as much as they possibly can. So these are three, I would say, controversial topics. Three things that uh, might be controversial, I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, check out the top link in the description. Check out the website, sign up to do some coaching. I, I teach those three avenues so that you can have a constant flow of women coming into your life. One. Two, I teach you a lot of inner sort of masculine traits that avoid you becoming bitter in the dating market. And I red pill the hell out of you. This advice is something that I would keep for oh, my students and clients. And probably not okay so anyway, to be putting it on YouTube. Sign up if you want to learn some of those things. I'll see you guys in the next video.